My name is Leonard Marquez. This is our build at Bricks by the Bay this year. It's a scale model of Chartres Cathedral in France. It's sort of a, uh, a famous, well-known cathedral built in the high Gothic style. It's got some elements of uh, Romanesque architecture, uh, high Gothic style later on as these uh, buildings obviously develop over hundreds of years. So we tried our best to render it as a scale model, 1 to 160 scale. Uh, you, this building sort of known for the two asymmetrical towers there. You've got kind of the planar Romanesque style tower and then you have the later uh, high Gothic style tower over there. Uh, other notable features I guess is the uh, roof there with the used a lot of sand green tiles on that uh, to get that color which I think reproduces kind of the original effect pretty well and obviously all the flying buttresses a lot of whole lot of gray pieces and uh, we also used a whole lot of uh, trans colored pieces to try to recreate the effects of the stained glass windows and we have by our count our best estimate there's uh, just about 6,000 uh, transparent colored bricks in the stained glass windows. That's pretty incredible. How did you land on this particular cathedral? Well, I've always been interested in medieval architecture, and this uh, cathedral is kind of one of the well-known uh, cathedrals in France. Uh, you think of high Gothic architecture, and everyone knows uh, Notre Dame, obviously, uh, but Chartres Cathedral is another well-known and famous cathedral. That's great. How long have you been working on this? Uh, this build was about uh, almost exactly a year, because uh, I started right after the last Bricks by the Bay, and uh, yeah, it took about just about a year to build. That's really awesome. What kind of methods did you use to, uh, you talked about the scale of the building, and uh, can you just tell us a little bit more about sort of how you made the, uh, the, the transition from, you know, thinking about the life size to what kind of bricks you're going to use? Right, so once we settled on a scale, which is uh, 1 to 160, the first real challenge was to lay out the floor plan here. So we just started with, um, you know, floor plans that are available online. It's a sort of a well-known cathedral, so there's lots of architectural renderings and drawings online. Kind of laid it out, figured out what scale would work in Lego, and built it from the ground up. We've got some in-progress pictures here, so you can kind of see on there... Uh, where we laid out the kind of the cruciform pattern with the cross and all of where the starting columns are going to be and then the columns just sort of rise up from there and uh, figured out what the cross section would look like in terms of the nave design and where all the flying buttresses come in and support the walls and uh, it came together pretty well. I feel like I feel like these uh, these documents you have here are uh, that's some really great behind the scenes you know uh, uh, information for our viewers to look at. Uh, most people don't bring this kind of stuff, but it's really interesting. You've got math on there, and uh, I, w at what point were you like, hey, this would be cool to bring along? Well, I just um, yeah, it, it, it was fun for me to try to figure out the process, and I took pictures along the way, and then I just decided hey, it might be neat for, uh, you know, to bring it so people could see it. And I'll show you if you want, I can show the inside uh, structure of the roof because that was one of the challenges. It's got a very steep pitch on the roof, and so how to get that rendered in Lego was, was a little bit of work. Yeah, go for it. So I've got this panel here that you can pull that off, that you can hold the uh, truss structure. roof comes off like that and then you can see down in there and is the interior somewhat intended to look the way I can't see it from my angle but our viewers can is does it does it look like the interior or are we just looking no, at the no, sort of your structure yeah no it's really just structure I didn't try to do out the interior that would be a whole nother uh, layer of complexity. Um, the columns are generally in the right places because that's part of the overall structure of the cathedral. So the column, the columnades in there are generally in the right places. Uh, but I don't have like floor patterns and pews and all that stuff. Oh, that's well, the outside is stunning. So, um, so you, you talked a little bit about the, the two different, um, the two different what do you call these out here? The towers. The towers. Yeah. And, and those ended up looking different because they were built at different times? Is right. 
Right, so um, on the my left here, it's actually the right side if you're looking at the front facade. That tower is a little simpler. It's the earlier tower that was built in the Romanesque style. And later on, they built the left-hand tower, if you're looking at it straight on. And that left-hand tower was built in the high Gothic style. So as the Middle Ages, uh, later on, they started making things more ornate, uh, more ornamental stuff, more intricate uh, stonework and carvings, and so you get the more intricate style. And these cathedrals were built over hundreds of years in kind of an ongoing process. So things that are added later on are obviously in a, a later style, and like I said, later on they became a little more ornamental. So I can actually pull it off for you. So this is the this one here is the high gothic ornate uh, left-hand tower. So you can see here a lot more intricate scroll work and just trying to recreate the effect of, of a very highly carved and ornate structure. I imagine that probably made for a more interesting design and build process having sort of two different challenges there on the towers. Yeah, it did. A lot of close-up pictures of each different tower and each one had its own sort of challenges. The other one, I'll pull that one off. So this tower is done in a Romanesque style. It's a little simpler, not quite as ornate with scroll work and gargoyles and all that stuff. But the challenge on this is that it's sort of an eight-sided structure. So building an eight-sided structure, you know, becomes a little more challenging and trying to get the kind of pyramidal, elongated pyramidal top was kind of tough and just did that with a lot of like half jumper step backs um, just to roughly try to get the shape. That's really cool. I, I, I'm noticing the spots here where you've got a, a one by four going across what is basically like three diagonal studs. Does that does that just work out, or do you have a secret way that you're kind of making that fit together? Uh, it's a lot of just seeing what happens to work out and how I can transition between those weird you know, angles and back into a 90 degree build pattern as you get up into the tower. So just a lot of messing with each layer and each connection to try to make it fit and come together. That's really wonderful. Are there any little details that you haven't pointed out haven't pointed out yet that you'd like uh, like our viewers to know about? Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I tried to make it sort of modular, so the major sections, like the two towers, come off. These side sections ultimately come off. Uh, the front here, this whole section, this whole section comes off in the front. Um, we got the little rose window there. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk about this with us here at uh, Bricks by the Bay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.